Hey there YouTube, it's uh, Helical4 here. Um, I've recently taken some time off of work. Um, I work in a research lab and um, so I've taken time off work, working in the lab and um, I've decided to take some some time now to do some YouTube videos um, of which I've wanted to do for some time now. Um, I, what's inspired me to start doing some of these videos is um, watching other YouTube videos that talk about um, DNA and um, uh, basically how the biological world uh, relates to us. Um, in particular, um, for example, discussions on you know junk DNA and the fact that our DNA is 98% identical to chimps and uh, discussions on ERVs or endogenous viral, retroviral uh, elements. Um, and I find that from reading the comments and watching some of these videos that there seems to be a lot of confusion about what a lot of these facts mean uh, to people. And um, I think a lot of the uh, reason for people just misunderstanding a lot of these claims is just their lack of the science behind how people came to come to these conclusions. Um, so for my videos I'm gonna have to ask you guys to put on your intellectual running shoes here and um, I'm gonna have to ask you to think a little bit about this um, about some of the material that I'm going to talk about. Um, in a lot of videos that I watch where people try to talk about these sort of things where in the discussion or the comment section of these videos especially where people are trying to explain to somebody who just doesn't seem to get it or they're just spit out these outrageous uh, claims about how it's false and you know that sort of thing um, and a lot of people just sort of respond by just saying oh so and so is stupid or you're 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 dumb or something like that a lot of these ad hominem attacks where like you know I we're all human so it's it's perfectly natural to just come out at somebody and be like oh you're stupid but that really doesn't help people to understand a lot of these this material um, it, it's in a way it's almost lazy on the part of the person giving these uh, ad, ad hominem attacks of just saying that, oh, you're stupid or something like that. But you know, I, I really believe that a lot of this material isn't really complicated. I mean, you might watch some of my videos and be like, wow, this guy is really intelligent, but I'm really no smarter than the average guy. It's just I've spent an awful lot of time learning this material and studying it and not only learning it from a book, but actually doing these kind of techniques in the lab and just learning firsthand in my own you know just seeing it there in front of me of how powerful these techniques are and that it's just not some biased uh, claims that somebody's uh, proposing to everybody it, it's supported by by data like from doing these molecular uh, techniques and it's a lot of these molecular techniques that I want to explain to you guys. Um, it's really not all that complicated. Uh, I was I was talking to a friend of mine about um, this very thing of how uh, a lot of these concepts are really uh, com complicated, very difficult for for people to understand and grasp. But they're really not that they're really not that complicated. It's just people have this mind block. Um, when it comes to thinking about these things and their mind just shuts down and they just they have trouble wrapping their brain around it and I think the, the first step to understanding these things is to don't think that this is too complicated for you to understand um, it's very very simple um, like I said when I was when I was talking to my friend about this thing where they're saying that Usually, it's it's the education system itself that sets up these um, mind blocks or these these hang-ups, if you will, about these um, 
ideas or just the fact of you know being able to understand these ideas and they were talking about this one memory of, of theirs from school where they would see on a video or a teacher would explain to them and before they even got down to the material itself they would first say something like what I'm about to show you is the simplified version because the full version is way too complicated for you to understand. Now, what a way to start somebody's thinking off. I'm, in my opinion, that's just not the right way to teach somebody something. Um, sure, these ideas are complicated. Um, there's a lot of material. But I think anybody has the capability of understanding these concepts. It's really not that difficult. Um, probably what they should have said is not that it's too complicated for you to understand, or this is the, simp the dumbed down version for you, that this is basically just what we're, what we're taking here are baby steps, or each little idea is a step, and you don't, don't just learn something and then just, oh, that makes sense, and then just toss it aside. Okay, time for the next one. A lot of these ideas are all tied together. Some of the um, things that I'd like to start talking about are um, some of the, um, the, the more basic uh, laboratory techniques. These are techniques that if you were to start up in a molecular lab or something like that, these are some of the things that you might do yourself. Um, and those techniques are um, PCR, uh, the pol it stands for the polymerase chain reaction. Um, this is a very simple technique, you'll see it in a whole variety of different research labs that do research on DNA or genes or, or whatever, it's, it's used, almost every single lab that I can think of uses this technique. Um, another very simple technique is uh, DNA cloning. Um, this is not to be mistaken or mixed up with the, uh, uh, the, the idea of animal cloning. Uh, basically cloning is just making a copy of something and um, DNA cloning refers to just making copies of DNA. Um, and uh, again, this is a very common technique um, that all labs, most most labs, anyways, use this technique for just making copies of whatever DNA that they're interested in. And um, with this, they use bacteria. So they put their DNA of interest in bacteria, and as the bacteria grows and makes copies of its own DNA, it also makes copy of the scientist's DNA of interest as well. Also, another technique. Um, that people use is restriction enzyme uh, uh, digestion, where these are enzymes that recognize a specific sequence of DNA and they cut the DNA at that sequence. Um, I'll go into some of the, uh, the history of these enzymes when I talk about this topic, um, but they are a very useful tool for manipulating DNA and uh, um, doing what you want to do with the DNA that you're working with. And um, when I talk about DNA sequencing, I'll, I'll show you uh, how it works and the actual da data that you would probably get sent back. It's rarely used, or sorry, done in the lab. Um, usually this technique um, is usually outsourced to a company or some other uh, facility that specializes in just doing just DNA sequences so, or sequencing. So uh, you'll have your DNA sample, you'll prepare it, and you'll send it to these these companies or these labs and then they will process the sample for you um, generate the sequence of your sample and then send you the actual DNA sequence which is just a string of A, T, C or G uh, in whatever sequence uh, it just so happens to be in and then they'll send you an electronic version of that sequence as a text file or or whatever and then you can analyze that to figure out well, the sequence that you're dealing with in that particular sample. Um, a great thing about DNA is that it's a form of digital information and we can use uh, computers to help us analyze uh, this information.